This recommendation also talks about um, ensuring care is accessible and appropriate. Uh, we've got uh, Claire McDonald, who is a member of the PMMRC and has been since 2019. Um, she's a midwife and midwifery advisor for Te Karete or Ngā Kai Whanau Ki Aotearoa, New Zealand College of Midwives. Um, she's been a member of a number of development groups for a number of recent national um, maternity guidelines, and I could read them all out, but we may be here <laughs> until well past three. Um, so um, what I do want to say, though, Claire, um, is that um, you have an, a strong interest in working towards equitable health outcomes, not just outputs. Um, and that's really important. Um, so I am going to hand over to you to talk a wee bit more about um, that accessible and appropriate care. Kia ora. Um, so I've got some slides to show you. Um, and I'm getting a little message to say my internet connection is unstable. Uh, despite having full bars on my Wi-Fi. So I do apologise if this is in any way interrupted. Um, normally there are no problems with that. So uh, I am just going to follow on from really where Violet left off. And Violet touched on the importance of uh, midwifery continuity of care, which is an evidence-based model that has been demonstrated to improve outcomes. But midwives in the community also need their clients to be able to access the other aspects of the maternity service that they need for their care. And one of those is ultrasound scans. And this has come up um, a number of times through the guidelines work that I've been involved with. We've had many discussions about not only what the recommendations for frequency of ultrasound are, but also how are we going to ensure as a system when these guidelines are implemented that Fano women people have access to these ultrasound scans. So this is partly to let you know about the latest guidance in relation to ultrasound and also just to look at what is happening to support access and what needs to happen. Uh, so this goes back in the PMMRC to 2012, which um, talked about SGA babies when they are confirmed by ultrasound, birth at a timely in a timely manner is recommended to prevent stillbirth. Uh, so various different guidelines speak to this, but this is just to show you how many indications for ultrasound there are. In New Zealand, we have the New Zealand Obstetric Ultrasound Guidelines that were published in 2019, and they came out of the recommendations of the Maternity Ultrasound Advisory Group that was set up a couple of years earlier. So there's the nuchal translucency and early anatomy at around 12 to 13 weeks, and then the anatomy scan at 19 to 20 or so weeks. And those are the two scans that are offered to every woman and person who's pregnant. And then we have the clinically indicated ultrasound scans, and I'm not going to read these, but this just gives you an, an indication of the large number of potential reasons that someone might need a scan during the, the pregnancy. The latest iteration of the referral guidelines um, has multiple conditions that require ultrasound scans for diagnosis prior to or subsequent to obstetric referral. And also the new S uh, small for gestational age and fetal growth restriction criteria rely on ultrasound for that diagnosis and then the consultation. A new national guideline is also shortly to be published. It was funded and led by ACC and will be published by Te Whatu Order. And this is on small for gestational age and fetal growth restriction. It will underpin and change the current um, practice recommendations that are in the GAP and GROW program. And as I've said, ultrasound is a key screening and diagnostic tool for fetal growth during the pregnancy. What we know from the PMMRC data is that um, being small for gestational age towards the end of pregnancy um, increases the risk of stillbirth quite substantially. And all of the data has shown that over the many years we've been providing reports. But it also recognizes that this is a scarce and valuable, a very limited resource, and we need to use this judiciously. So the hope from this guideline is that it will give a better indication of who needs scans and who doesn't for growth. Um, there are a number of challenges which should be free of charge to the woman or person ac accessing the service, we don't have free access to ultrasound scans in the community, um, and certainly not in every area. So cost is a barrier. 
um, location. Certainly if you um, live in some rural areas, some um, provincial towns, there's a lot of transport and travel time to get to an ultrasound provider. Timely appointments can be a problem, and that is partly in some areas because of overuse of a limited resource. And we really do need to be focusing on clinically indicated scans, not scans for um, checking the baby because we, you know, that's what somebody wants to see. Um, and we are seeing a bit of a growth in the commercial use of ultrasound. So, in terms of current examples around supporting access to ultrasound. Some Te Whata Water districts are funding um, scans for community services card holders. Some are funding scans for women living with deprivation who don't have a community services ca card. And some are providing petrol vouchers to support access to distant ultrasound services. To be clear, what I'm talking about in terms of the cost and funding is that community ultrasound is broadly provided by private providers who have a subsidy from the Section 88 contract, um, the maternity contract that midwives also claim under, but that doesn't cover the full cost of ultrasound scans. So there is a co-payment that ranges from $40 up to well over $100 for any given ultrasound. Um, so the private providers in some areas are waiving the co-payment for community services card holders. Um, and we would ask that, you know, uh, one of the ways that private providers can consider how they increase the accessibility is only providing clinically indicated ultrasound that comes with a referral from a clinician. And for referrers, um, we're asking that you really consider the reason that you're referring for ultrasound and go back to that guidance that I've just covered. Um, you know, make sure that each in each scan is truly indicated. So that we're not using up these appointments in our, in our limited workforce for um, scans that are not needed. And you know, unnecessary scans carry their own sequelae, which can be um, problematic. So the key messages are really that while I've highlighted some of the local solutions that are being sort of used as a bit of a patchwork way of trying to block up um, you know, the inequities that we have. Actually, we need government strategy to recognise that all aspects of maternity care which contribute to safe outcomes are necessary and need funding. Um, we need a national strategy to look at that for consistency across the motu, and our priority must be equitable access to clinically indicated ultrasound. You only need to look at some of the MQSP reports to see that we are not seeing the same access to ultrasound in every region or among every ethnicity. And just as a final note, this is not just about funding, but it's also about what we could consider in terms of creative solutions like mobile ultrasound provision. But I will leave that for you guys to ponder and um, just thank you for your time today having a think about this particular issue. Thank you, Claire. Um, I feel like that is quite an important topic for a lot of people here. So um, thank you for um, talking a bit about it.